Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Mandy. Well, most of you know me probably as Life and Leopard Pumps from my Instagram, from my blog, my Facebook page. Even though it's not that popular, I am finally stepping out into YouTube. Yay! It's my first video ever, so bear with me if I'm a little bit awkward or things sound a little bit funny in this room. I just reorganized everything and there's not a lot of stuff in here yet, so you're probably going to hear a lot of background noises and echoes, but I will work on that for you. So, today I am doing a <gasps> Sephora haul, which I figured would be a fun way to start out my channel. Of course, I'm getting text messages right now. It wouldn't be a YouTube video without bloopers, right? So anyway, I figured it would be a fun way to start out my channel because Sephora hauls are probably, I don't go too crazy, but they're probably my favorite video to watch. So I figured I would go over some of the goodies I bought this month. Um, it's sort of a collective haul, so there's a little bit of stuff, but not too much. Um, but yeah, we'll just jump right into it. So the first thing I want to go over with you is some new skincare products. The first thing I bought are these Sephora Pearl Face Masks. They're just little sheet masks. They were $6 a piece. Um, they caught my eye as I was walking out because that eye always gets me. It probably does the same for you. Um, but the reason I bought these is I really, really, really love the Bosha Saki Bright Whitening Masks. Um, and they were all out of stock when I went in there. These I saw and I read the back and it's supposed to have the same sort of effect where it's supposed to even out your skin tone, brighten your skin. It lays on your face just like the Bosha one does. And these are... $6 a piece as opposed to $8 a piece like the Bosha one. So I got two. Um, I like to try things more than once before I form an opinion on it. They were only $6. So yeah, maybe I'll put one on tonight and I'll give you some feedback on it as soon as I try it. The second thing I picked up was this Kors Jasmine Lip Butter. Um, this is what I use on my lips every night before I go to bed and every day before I put on any lipstick. Um, let me open it for you. It comes in this little tin. It is $12. Like I said, I got this at Sephora. This one is tinted to be pink. They have two other colors, I believe. One is supposed to be non-color, but it comes off very white. Um, this looks a little bit more natural, which is why I picked it up. Um, but you know what got me to get these is I watch a ton of Nicole Guerrero and she has that best damn lip mask that she puts on almost in every video and it looks so creamy and so smooth. And I can never friggin' find it. It's always out of stock. I mean, it's sort of expensive. I want to say it's $20 or $20 and change. Don't quote me on that. But when I found this one at Sephora a couple months ago, it was 12 bucks. I figured I picked it up. And I love it. Um, I used to have those chronic dry lips. And ever since I started using this, I don't even have any problems with it. Even when I get sunburns in the summer, it's not that bad anymore. So I highly, highly recommend this. The third skincare product that I picked up is this Murad Skin Polish. Let me read the back of it. It says, powerful exfoliating scrub removes embedded impurities without stripping skin of natural moisture and revealing a more vibrant complexion. It's supposed to help relieve clogged pores and blackheads. Um, it's supposed to balance your oil production and it's supposed to leave skin soft and supple. So it's got some hefty claims on there. It was sort of expensive. I think it was $30 for this and you get 3.5 fluid ounces. The reason that I bought this is because I watch Makeup by Shayla all the time. Um, she doesn't have that many YouTube videos yet, but I follow her on Snapchat and she was raving about this. Um, usually everything that she uses on her skin, I've always loved. I have combination skin, but mostly on the dry end. Um, so I figured I'd try it out. I have problems with um, big pores and clogged pores, so I was hoping that this would help. So now moving on to the fun stuff. Um, the first thing that I got was this Kat Von D Locket Translucent Powder, if you can see it. I haven't even opened it yet. This has been sitting in my extras drawer for about two weeks now, so I'm so excited. Oh, the packaging is... Really nice, but it's sort of, you see that? It's sort of open. So let me tighten that first before I pour powder everywhere. You see the lid, it's got that same insignia that she usually has on everything. 
Um, I honestly forget how much this is. I have to check the Sephora website and I will link all the links to the products down below. But the reason I got this is because everybody's always ranting and raving about the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. Like I said before, I have pretty dry skin and it tends to make me look very, very cakey under my eyes. So I'm on the hunt for the perfect powder. Um, I do like the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder, but it's very white, so you have to be very careful with it. Opening this up, oh my god, look how cute that is. That's why it's not coming out. It has a little, I don't know if you can see if this will focus, but it has a little star where the powder comes out and a plastic covering to make sure that it stays encased. It actually looks very similar to the Laura Mercier powder. It's tan, allegedly translucent, but I'll try it out and I'll get back to it. I think it was probably in the same price range because Kat Bundy can be pretty expensive, but like I said, I'll link it down below. Okay, so the next thing I got, I, this is def, okay, I'm not even lying, this is definitely what had me the most excited to walk into Sephora today, and it is, this, see, you see Marc Jacobs and you know, you know, it is the Marc Jacobs Airbrush Soft Glow Blush Duo, and I got number 504 in Kink and Kisses. So I've been seeing these everywhere. It's gotten really good reviews. Um, I'm sort of a blush junkie. Because I'm so fair and I self tan a lot, I find it really hard to find the perfect blush. When I'm very pale, the colors that I like when I'm self tanned don't work for me. The peaches, the um, the goldens. I'm very drawn to those, but they're just they're just not flattering on my skin tone. When I saw these, they have a mixture of two colors in each blush. So you can either use the lighter and the dark and you can swirl it all together. Um, I've heard really good things about them. Also, they didn't look super pigmented, which I sort of need. I can be a little bit heavy handed with the blush, so I find it's a lot easier to work with a powder that's a little bit less pigmented because you're better off building up rather than taking off. So like I said, the color I got was 504 in Pink and Kisses. And let me open that for you. Oh, it's got a nice big mirror. And this one is sort of a pink, see that? A pink and rose duo. But it's not, I don't know if it's really catching it on camera, but it's not super peachy, but it's also not super pink either, which I think is great for fall. Um, and yeah, I, I'm not gonna show you a big mirror, but also, I mean, it's Marc Jacobs. It's a perfect compact. It's got a huge mirror. It covers the span of the entire compact. And I just thought it would be great for, even when I'm doing tutorials, if I'm going to do, you know, my eyeliner on the screen or something like that, I just think this looks, you know, really chic as opposed to one of my dirty old matte compacts. So I won't lie, I'm definitely one of those people that gets caught up in the packaging. This is one of the things that got me. So yeah, I'll let you know how I make out with that when I start trying it. But this one was just purchased today. So brandy, brandy new. Okay, the next thing I got was I got the second Bobbi Brown highlighting powder now i have the pink i, I want to say it's called pink glow but don't quote me on it i had bought that last year for the wedding season when i was doing brides because it has a really really soft glow um it's more pink to white on the sheen as opposed to gold or really glittery and it just looks really really good when you're doing bridal makeup i hesitated with the bronze glow just because i typically can't use a bronze highlighter because I'm so pale um I don't know but I saw it on and I thought what the hell I have to pick it up so let me just open it for you and you can see what it actually looks like Let's see look at that oh my god that is gorgeous let me just swatch that for you too look how pretty that is and I mean see for me it looks like it's gonna be a little bit too dark yeah you can already tell on the back of my hand it's beautiful, but look how dark that is on me. It's probably going to have to be a blush topper. And I'm a little bit self tan right now, but it's wearing off. So if I really go for it this winter, maybe I'll be able to rock it. You, I could even put that on the eye. Look at that. That's beautiful. Or in a corner highlight. But yeah, I just couldn't say no. I'm a highlighter junkie. I'm thinking about doing a highlighter haul. Uh, not a highlighter haul. A highlighter collection on you because I've had so many building up and I think I have to get rid of them. So let me know if that's something you would like to see. Leave it in the comments down below and I'll try to set that up for everybody. Okay. So the next thing I got was two Anastasia liquid lipsticks. 
I don't know if you can see in the background. Mm, that's something worth getting up. Um, I probably have almost all of the colors at this point. One of these is a repurchase, and that's American Doll. If you follow me on all, any of my other social media platforms, you know that this is my go-to red. Um, they're probably my favorite liquid lipstick formula. S no, not second to, in line with Dose of Colors, but nobody has a red this good. It's very blue-based, which looks good on people with my skin color, but it's also very deep, so people that are a little bit more on the warm side can still get away with wearing it and it's just, it's great for fall so this is my second one of these i just i almost ran out of the first one so i just thought i'd buy it back up before fall really got going and then this one is actually a new one to me it's soft lilac i don't know if you can see that it just doesn't want to focus on this is exactly what it says it's a lilac color but it's not super overwhelming see isn't that beautiful and i don't well, it's not true. I definitely have something like that in my collection. But I saw, I think, it, I can't remember who it was. I saw somebody do a tutorial the other day and use this, and I was like, mm, I have to get it. I went online, it was sold out. Went in the store, they only had two left. So at that point, when you see there's only one or two left, you know that you have to grab it. It's just an excuse to buy it because you don't want somebody else to pick it up. So let me swatch these. I'm going to put soft lilac. See, and it's a pink color, but I think it's deep enough that you can really get away with it fall, especially during the day. And then I'm going to put American Doll right underneath it. See? And I don't know if the camera's really doing it justice because it looks really, the for soft lilac, I don't know if the camera's doing it justice because it looks very pink. Um, but it's more mauve in person than it looks. Also on camera, American Doll looks pretty deep red, more like seraphine, but it's actually more of a blue-based bright red. But yeah, that's what I got from Anastasia. You know what, I actually went in there looking for the stick foundations, but the Sephora and the Ulta for me don't have the stands yet. I don't know if it's too new and no Sephora's are carrying it yet, but I've seen so many people online getting the stick foundation and the colors are the colors are all wacky almost because they have such a wide range of colors which is great for people with really light skin tones or people that are really yellow or really dark but for people like me that are relatively fair and have like a neutral undertone it's sort of tough online to pick your color or your shade so i'll keep working on that and then if i find one i'll let you know oh man we're coming to the end oh no we're not okay so the next thing i bought up was this roller lash from benefit now, I will be the first to admit I'm not a huge upscale mascara fan. I'm just not. I sort of think they're a waste of money um, most of the time because they're usually in the $20 to $30 range. They only last, you know, one to three months. Even if you're not using it that often, they dry up, they can get bacteria, and then we really need to be diligent about getting rid of them. So to spend, you know, $20, $30 on something and use it a couple times and have to toss it, and that sort of rubs me the wrong way. The other thing I have a problem with is that drugstore mascaras are so great. You can use L'Oreal Telescopic, L'Oreal Voluminous, uh, Maybelline has some great ones, and they usually in the price range from like seven to $12. So to double or triple that price for a mascara, it's just, it's not really my thing. But I've seen everybody talking about this. Every once in a while, something intrigues me. I know this has been around for a long time, but I figured I'd give it a shot. So, I mean, nothing special. The applicator is, let me see if I can get that to focus. The applicator looks like it's totally plastic. It's curved, which I do like, which reminds me of my L'Oreal Voluminous Mascara. It doesn't look super black. I don't know, I'll, we'll try it out and then I'll get back to you on it, but 99% of the time I regret my high-end mascara purchases. I hope this isn't another one of those types. So, moving on to the last thing that I got from Sephora. This is nothing super exciting. This is the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. I'm gonna take it out of this package in case you've been under a rock and you haven't seen this. But this is just a backup. I still probably have about a quarter left in the one that I'm constantly using, but I love it so much. Um, and it's expensive and I had extra money this month so I figured what the hell let me buy it now and not have to bite the bullet later but it's beautiful it's got this glass packaging and yeah it's great I don't think I'd recommend it 
for anybody with dewy skin or oils, oily skin or anybody with problems like that. Like I said, I'm pretty dry. Um, I also think it's great for my brides. It's sort of an extra luxury when I'm done doing their makeup. So having a backup of this is great. Okay, onto my last two products. They're actually not from Sephora. Sorry to trick you. Um, but I just wanted to give these shout outs because these are brand new and these were YouTube made me do it guys. Um, I went on Macy's.com through Ebates. That's where I usually buy all of my MAC makeup just because Ebates will usually give you 6% cash back. And I, Macy's does a lot of free shipping. And so I tend to find that's the best place to get MAC products. Although MAC has been stepping their game up a lot. I get a lot of emails from them with, you know, free two-day shipping codes, 10% off codes. So keep your eye out for those. But if they don't have anything special going on, I tend to use Macy's as my go-to for MAC products. So anyway, the reason about these is another YouTuber, of course, is Beauty by Rosita, Rosita Apple, which is one of my favorites. Um, she always talks about this eyeliner, and it's a MAC eye coal. And it is in the color Costa Riche. It is a deep, warm brown color. Now, believe it or not, I don't do a lot of brown eyeliner. I know it's supposed to look really good on blue eyes, but I just, I don't know. I just don't do a lot of brown eye looks lately. But she raves and raves and raves about it. And I just thought, you know what, maybe I'll try it out. Maybe when I want to actually put it in my lower lash line, rather than doing something so harsh like a black eyeliner, I can try this one. My only hesitation was I have the the black MAC eye coal. I don't know if there's a specific name for it, but it is the black one. And it bleeds so much. If I'm gonna put it on my, if I'm gonna tight line my upper eye, my upper eye, if I'm gonna tight line when I'm doing like a black wing or I'm doing a smoking eye, and I wanna leave my lower lash line bare or I wanna put a nude liner in it, forget it. I can't use a MAC eye coal. The only thing I can ever use that for is if I'm gonna put it on my upper, put up my upper lid and smoke it out. It's great for that or it's great for a base if you're gonna do a sparkly shadow on the lid. But if you're gonna put it in your waterline, forget about it. So hopefully this doesn't transfer as much as the black one does, but I just figured I'd give it a shot. Oh, maybe it's not that warm. It actually looks sort of cool when I'm swatching it. Let's see? Get my face out of there. So we'll see. I mean, it's creamy, which the other MAC I cool is too. It was never needed. But we'll see how it works. And the last thing I got was the MAC Paint Pot in Painterly, which I have MAC Paint Pot in Soft, Soft Ochre. That was a total YouTube made me do it too. I don't use it that often because it's very yellow based. Um, and this one is supposed to be a little bit more neutral, a little bit more pink based for people that have fair skin tone like me. And yeah, she also raves about this too. I actually see a lot of people on YouTube raving about this. My problem is with soft ochre, other than the fact that it's just not the right color for my skin tone, is it creases on me. And I was watching an old Luster Lux video this week actually about it, and she had mentioned if you're if you have hooded lids, which I obviously do and you have oily lids, it's probably best to put a primer down under your MAC paint pot before you do makeup. And I just thought to myself, well, don't people use paint pots as an eye primer? And I think that works great if you're just looking for something to stick the eyeshadow to. And I think she was saying put down a clear primer underneath just to make sure that nothing creases on top of it. But to me, that just seems like too much work. It seems like you're doing the same step twice. Typically what I'll do is I'll, I will use my concealer under my eyes. I will cut my eyebrows with my concealer just to make sure they're clean underneath and I'll blend it all together. And when I use my translucent powder, I'll set my concealer on my eyelids with that and that's the perfect eyeshadow base. So that's been working for me. I tend to not buy eye primers because of that, but everybody's talking about this. I figured I'd give it another shot. Maybe I was just too turned off by the soft ochre to actually really use it and test it out and see if I'm gonna like it. So we'll see how it goes and I'll let you know if it's gonna be a yay or nay. So thank you for coming along with me on my first video. Hopefully there will be a lot more to come. You know, I'm still a little bit nervous and a little awkward. So I appreciate you getting through the whole video if you were able to stay. I'm going to link all my social media platforms below, my Instagram, my Snapchat, my Facebook, 
my blog if you're interested in following me. If you could do me a huge favor and like this video and subscribe, it would really mean the world to me. I'm going to try to put some really good content on here for you because it's really important to me. Um, I love watching YouTube videos. I love learning about things. So I'm hoping that I can give something back to new viewers out there if you're not getting it somewhere else. So thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one.